Hello and welcome as it is the uh, fifth day or the completion of the 5th of November 2020. Uh, my name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and the like within each his own risk and their own reward. All right then. So silver, which is what uh, I'll be focusing within this video. Long story short, I do believe that there is going to be some tremendous upside and probably very soon amongst price action in here. I have these lines drawn in and what they represent amongst such is Fibonacci retracement from the highs of around $50 per ounce established and test, test fit for the second time. So retested uh, from 1980, but those highs and the lows of uh, what is now about 12 bucks. It came up to the 38.2% retracement and there really wasn't much resistance there at all via that of the monthly chart or, or nor that on the daily chart there really wasn't any resistance there either and I had a concise quick move up to the next key uh, 30 or 61.8 percent level at uh, 28.58 and there was resistance here and it had a, another day where or a couple of the one on the August 18th that tried to break out and it didn't quite get to that high close but although it did pierce extra on there on the first day of September it has not been up to the $28 uh, dollar level since then but I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a matter of short time before not only does that level get tested but it also gets taken out as we have within the session on that of Thursday an attempt to do such breaking it above the 18 average of highs after a good couple days consolidating amongst such and the next target level given the Fibonacci I would uh, be stating I will go say 35 amongst this time frame which represents the previous high in here what I do find very interesting amongst this is uh, where was this uh, $20.28 test because this was a very long test I mean it came down on September the 21st and, and and bottomed on the 24th and it never got down to 2028 and, and we had a chance on the October the 7th to break down no, no such doing and another opportunity uh, October the uh, 28th and 29th no such doing again either so this is a very very interesting situation when I adjust the Fibonacci from this low to this high well, what I see in here is that it did something very interesting, which is really retrace at a 23.6% level, not go down to 38.2, which is buyers to me showing a lot of control within this market. So am I going to believe this attempt? I mean, it was a failure breaking out above the 18 average of highs on both October the 9th. And October the 21st, albeit in both failures, it did well in correcting. I mean, a little bit of a breakdown here, but it held the previous uh, tested low. And yeah, actually, I think it's going to, uh, in the next few days, manage to, and moving into next week, of course, we say days because there's only one more day left in the week. But in the next few days, uh, make a move, test within the high 29 level. And then again, make a move, I think, within the 30s very soon. To me, journey destination, the destination to me is practically obvious. That's, I bought a whole bunch more silver earlier this week because of that fact. As I believe, of course, uh, silver prices uh, will be going higher. And a lot of it is not only just because I think it's a good commodity that I think has uh, got good future value, but it's the weak value or the loss of value, I think, the fiat currencies globally are going to be enduring and looking at silver on the short term time frame it's a very lot of interesting setups telling me that this could be a very interesting day on friday well, we'll see what happens of course a resistance was established here 24 and a quarter change and, and obviously taken it very nicely in today's session and now we're coming up to this level of resistance and well i can already see within this period alone that one it's already pierced above it two we've had a little bit of a sell-off and just just a little bit it's already got one of those bullish type of periods with uh, six minutes and 25 seconds to go so the period's pr practically done yeah this is a very bullish setup moving forward one hour term time frame 
that broke out above the 18 average of highs midnight last night. And it's just been continuously running all night. So finally, a little bit of a sell-off that comes into the 18. It's already showing potential for excitation already. This is just crazy. 15-minute term. And it gets even more crazy when we look at the short-term analysis in here. Because, yeah, there's this beautiful run. Okay, so now we have a spot where it goes below it. So now we can maybe start talking about correcting within one of these lows, this low to this high. And this, this is all it does. And now, to me, it's almost like showing a little bit of that. It's like a failed sell-off big time. But it's like wowzers as far as I'm seeing how the buyers are really taking control of this market. But the setup that I see amongst these four periods after everything it has endured before the fact is a very very bullish situation i could talk about like retracement mode from this high to this low and talk about on the one minute term time frame just go through all this data okay 61.8 percent somewhere around here it had like no problem getting up to it from the low, correcting within it, and now showing all these nice higher highs, higher lows. To me, this thing is ready to get going. Now, it's still within correctionary mode within the weekly term time frame, and it still can rally all the way up to about 26 and a third, which is about 90 cents more, 3 to 4% before it's got any talk of possible uh, reassertion of this beautiful long-term bull run that started back in May. But in doing such, and you see, ooh, okay, 27 in that area there, that would be, especially when you see it starts to fly north of that, then this thing could get pretty, pretty serious. I wouldn't be surprised, of course, if that happens. I do like how we have uh, some nice little extra volume in here that is uh, coming within this move. I, I do think that, uh, that this thing, again, is going to be ready to get going. But if this thing does so within here, as I see on the monthly chart, and I've talked about this before in the previous months that it's had, where it's broken out above it, of course, from downtrends, well, breaking out above it in here, re-exitations from the uptrend in here, a failure attempt, failure attempt. Uh, then you can even say there was one failure attempt in here, a failure attempt breaking in here, and a successful attempt breaking out above here. And wow, what a move. And then all the re exitation for the final leg. So this is to me, it's like leg one move of step or step one of the rally, which to me, step two rallies are usually bigger from the point A low in here. But overall, I think of this as step A rally, correctionary mode. And then breaking above this from here and then north of 50 is a step B rally. Just like step A and then within this, step A is from 19 before I was born. And then in here to like after I was born. I was born in the mid-70s. So uh, this rally here, albeit the first one was damn good too. And uh, we'll see how uh, this makes out. But I see, to me, I've had a little bit of a correctionary move. Hasn't quite came the 18 average of high, so be it. It's not like this is like an official thing that it has to ha hit to be a correct official correction. I see on the monthly chart that it's had the big move and it's starting to look like it's ha heading back up in the direction towards just that up. And of course, on the daily time frame, attempting to break out after what has been really a double sustained run within it because we had a lot of correctionary phase within this because you can stay like august mid-august early august we were in correctionary mode then like an elevator moved down and we just continue what we were doing before and that's just up and down jo chomping sideways just before we were doing going sideways between 26 low change and 28 nowadays we've been doing the range between 22 high to where we are now 25 mid change and uh yeah and then getting above this level of resistance in here yeah, I think this has got some uh, fantastic moves uh, that could happen towards the upside. Now, what I think is very interesting is the uh, gold to silver ratio. As it, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that with a lot of big moves, that a failed move occurs before, well, before it happens. And this move to 125 ratio is, was, I think, was just that. 
as on the monthly term time frame, this is a situation in which we had this major, major resistance level between 81 and up to 100. And then it just noticeably gets above it like that before this happens. Oh, if this is the granddaddy of it, I'm, I'm talking about it would be interesting to see if we could A, come back down to previous low of 2011 at around uh, 32. And then the key low here, we got like 16 or so from uh, 1980 and I think it could even be a little bit lower than that like maybe I don't know 12 or something I don't I got data but uh, I'm not going to calculate it right now either way I mean that's big in itself just to go down and retest the 2011 lows as it goes you can see how it had this nice little break above the 18 average of highs in February getting no well north of that 100 number successfully no unsuccessfully looking like it's correcting within the 18 it has a bit of time within the 18 average of highs but then the july august session it just violates it coming back to where it came from the 84 which was that major major key level of prior resistance in this market and it's dipped below that now we can see it's had a move right up to the 18 average of highs on september month and you see it's going down 73.72. Yeah, that uh, wouldn't be a surprise to me if we could start to see a significant pattern of lower highs and lower lows within this particular market, most likely because of the fact that silver is just going to have fantastic moves that are going to that are just going to be even happy for gold holders and that we're gold. And I can take a quick, quick preview of the gold market. Well, it'll be going up, just not to the same intensity. I think that of the silver market, gold in at $1,943. So it wouldn't be a surprise if we see, I wouldn't even be surprised to see $100 silver within the next 12 to 24 months in time. And in such, let's assume if that's the case, so you see silver move up to 100, where maybe gold might make it to the 5,000 number and still may be a little ways away, maybe 4,000. And then, of course, the ratio, this would be maybe gold doubling and silver quadrupling, stuff like that. That's the ratio falling in half. Wouldn't surprise me if something like that happens over what's well, not that that long of a period of time. That's why I'm saying, yeah, 12 to 24 is a quick, rough estimate. But as far as gold is concerned on the weekly term time frame, same thing here is attempting to break out above the 18 average as well. Two levels of trading within the 18, pretty much the exact same thing. So it's been in this correctionary mode from August the 11th because has it been in any type of downtrend? Eh, not really. We've had two legs lower. This report established first near about 1913 and then big at the uh, 1874. And then here again, we've had support established uh, down first at 1852 and then again at 1860 or so. But now we've, we're well north of those numbers and... Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be a surprise again seeing silver. This goes up to say 2082. So what's that gain of like 147%? But then maybe silver goes up like 20% in the same sort of time frame and the ratio goes lower. Of course, we'll see how the market really reacts and I'll be uh, just keep on chugging along with these markets. But uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.